What's happening, sports fans? We welcome you back to another episode of San Diego Prep Insider. Christian Pedersen, Tommy Morris, Bodie De Silva. The intern is somewhere around here um, doing stats in the background. We appreciate you guys joining us for another week. We got top 10. We've got game balls. We've got game predictions. We've got some other stuff to discuss. But first, we've got to get to a word from our wonderful sponsors and supporters, the U.S. Army. All right, guys, uh, week set, uh, week eight, week seven, week eight. I don't know. We're closing in. Uh, Depends on if you believe in week zero or not. That's yeah. that's always the one that bothers uh, it, me. It's, it's <laughs> the week that I go and check what we labeled previous week's show. And yeah, then exactly. In post-production uh, of the show. But we welcome you back. Uh, let's start off, as we always do, with the top ten. I will say this. I uh, engaged back and forth with a uh, – somewhat displeased John Maffey on a healthy discourse amount of emails this week about my voting in the time. Love it. Because uh, I've got some opinions and I think things are starting to shift and I think it's time we start looking retroactively at some of the wins and losses early in the season and reevaluating going, all right, that team's a little bit more booty than we thought or whatever. Uh, so let's start with you, Bodie De Silva. Bodie has always joins us from Scorebook Live. Scorebook Live is the official digital content provider of the entire high school universe but they specifically work with the cif here in california and we love them for their coverage of the cif san diego section from bodie bodie your top 10 this week yeah carlsbad stays at number one these last two weeks they've looked really impressive 42 7 uh julian sand can't ask for much more than what he's done and defensively i think that's been a surprise i, I figured they'd be good i didn't know that they've been really that, that, that they've been this good this last two weeks against two uh run heavy teams um, allowing seven, seven total points and just over a couple hundred yards. They've been great. So uh, I've moved Lincoln up to number two this week. Typically, I do not move a team down when they don't lose, and that would be in Madison's case. Uh, but what Lincoln did was really impressive. Went up 14 nothing, then we're down 17-14 and, and scored 17 unanswered in the fourth quarter against a Cathedral Catholic team that it's still Cathedral. They're, they're down from last year, obviously. But uh, Roderick Robinson went for 217 yards. He now is 1,500 on the season. Uh, Madison's there at number three. They did everything they needed to against Mira Mesa. Still a big fan of them. They're undefeated. They'll get their chance starting with Cathedral this week if they want to win a Western League title. Uh, Helix is there at number four for me. Uh, they had a bye week, and they will definitely need it to prepare. They're going up to take a take on a really good Mission Viejo team. Uh, they lost to them last year at home 38-21. Uh, Mission Viejo is better than last year. Helix is probably not as good as last year, so uh, we will see what happens in that one. Cathedral Catholic slides down to number five. Um, really looking like a bubble team right now for the open division. They got a game against Madison this week that um, they really cannot afford to slide to three and five. He, uh, excuse me, Poway's there at number six. They were off two weeks after the forfeit against Vista and then having their bye week, they came back and put up 51 on Del Norte. Connor Rath is someone I know we talk so much about Roderick Robinson, but 306 rushing yards, four touchdowns. Connor Rath is, is the real deal. He's been showing that the last couple of years. Number seven, uh, Granite Hills. They had a bye last week after their loss to Madison. They're going to host Christian this week. Um, one of the biggest surprises, if not the biggest surprise to me around the county this year, Granite Hills is a very good team uh, and will be dangerous in playoffs. El Camino is there at number eight. Um, they used 17 points second half to come back and take down La Costa Canyon 23-20. I had those teams right next to each other in the rankings, so no surprise that it was that close. Um, El Camino right there in the mix to maybe grab a second place spot in the Avocado League. They already did lose to Carlsbad, but easier schedule on their way home. Uh, Modern Day Catholic jumps back in for me at number nine. Two straight shutouts now since their bye week, uh, St. Augustine and Central. Um, they've got the guys. They're going to play Hilltop this week before they get into league play. Um, they can grab one of those top spots in Division One if they keep playing how they have. And then Mira Mesa is there at number 10. Uh, they gave up 40 points to Madison on Friday after two prior shutouts, um, but they got to be looked as the favorites in Eastern League. They're going to start this week taking on the Cavers of San Diego. Tommy, your thoughts or and, and or your top 10. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of agree with the teams that are in there, maybe some ones that are just not knocking on the door. I think Point Loma's getting pretty close. Snad looked really impressive this year on both years. The Costa Canyon kind of, again, game in a little bit. And then, again, a team that hasn't been 
talent as much as the other ones is Carmel. They seem to be keep they seem to keep put be putting up numbers on both sides of the ball, whether it be positive offense, negative defense. So those are some teams that may find themselves in team for this season. It felt like it went by so fast, but um, we're, we're already, you know, pretty much well into the, uh, the second half of the season here. Yeah. We're in, we're in the beginning of the home stretch. Everybody next week, everybody will be in league uh, for the rest of the year. We still have obviously Helix with a late season cross section game and some, you know, other like modern day in Hilltop that you said are going to play that are some, some uh, of those like obligated cross league type stuffs. But yeah, we're, we're in the, we're in the thick of it. We're in the home stretch. I put Mount Carmel in my top 10 doing the retroactive, that loss to central. You can then also, you know, say that now modern day beat central in a certain way. You can try and do that transitive property, but that loss to central was week one. And yeah, not every football team that loses Jaden Virgin to graduation has it immediately figured out week one of the next year, but then that's the outlier now for the rest of the data set. And so, yeah, I have them in the top 10. I like the El Camino LCC game being that close. I think that it's probably unlikely that that, that, that winds up being the division one championship game, but I would have loved or will love if that winds up being the division one championship game, that'd be a sick matchup. Uh, those two teams were very close. Um, I did not have Cathedral in my top 10. I don't know, kind of done with it. Like they lost bad enough on some of those that then you go back and again, you look at that one against modern day and it was week one and it was cl- like, yeah, I, uh, it's, it's, it's nice having Poway and some of those teams up in the top and it's nice having some refreshing blood. I think that also the thing that to me gets scarier and scarier every week is that Lincoln is the real deal and they are a team with a loss that is the real deal and like that kind of sometimes the teams that are nine and oh or whatever going late into the season the one underlying question you have is you know what kind of adversity can they get through have they taken an l yet and bounced back lincoln's already taken that loss and bounced back from it and become a progressively better team the rest of the season and not faltered in any way shape and form so that's scary and that's open division scary and i think that Lincoln versus anybody in that equation of open division would be a fantastic championship. Um, anything else top 10 before we can go uh, move forward? No, I'm assuming we're all good. Bodie. Yeah, no, I'll just add a couple of those teams you guys mentioned. I always add five others. I considered this week. Lacoste Canning was in that Mount Carmel uh, point Loma who uh, Tommy mentioned. I'm going to get my first look at point Loma this Friday. Uh, looking forward to that one. Point Loma and Morse. Um, I just thought that it was a perfect week to go check out those two teams. I think that'll be a really competitive game. So uh, Mission Hills, Ramona, those are two others I had that are kind of in that next group where they could be a week away from grabbing a, a top 10 spot. How about Fulbro? They're in there. Uh, I was a little surprised oh, they, they lost to really Brawley a couple weeks ago. Yeah, no, I, I, but I think in Point Loma, the same case is just strength of schedule is not as great. Um, but as you move further in the league, that is going to pick up. So. Point Loma will be uh, an interesting case study in the 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 necessary evils of coaching and being the guy that can make the tough decision. Uh, Joel Allen, like I said last week, maybe deserves immense eternal credit for taking them off of that season and and long term preserving the, yeah, that's fair. the younger generations that they had at, at, at that time. Bodie De Silva always has something good cooking on Scorebook Live. Last week he had a running backs poll that went internationally viral. Right? <laughs> like sad. Um, Bodie, what do you got cooking on SB Live this week that you want to uh, promote for the people, and how can they check that stuff out? Yeah, scorebooklive.com slash California, then all our socials, SB Live CA. Um, I've moved on to receivers this week, so trying to get through uh, most, if not all, the position lists as we get through the end of the year. And um, I think it's a rare year where we have probably a, a handful of tight ends that will make up their own list. Um, it won't oh. be 25 or anything. So I'm going to keep wide receivers and tight ends separate. So uh, look for wide receivers here in the next couple couple days before the weekend and um, get a poll. You can go vote for your favorite one. And nobody yell at Bodie when you're a, if you're a tight end and you're not on the list. You're, you're Just <laughs> wait. Wait a week. Yeah, or, or if you're a corner, but you also play wide receiver, and I, I'll have a two-way list as well at the end of everything because there are some guys that really could go either way. Bodie, can you give us one player that might be a little bit of a surprise or maybe an underclassman or someone that's going to be featured in this list from the wide receivers? Yeah, I think from, from Morse, Aliante Logan is someone that coming into the year was not really on the radar, but with the stats he continues to put up each week, 
um, certainly on that list. And and I don't put them in any sort of order. That's that's for others to decide on there. You can go vote for your favorite one. But I'm just trying to get the, the whether it's the top 20, 25 guys all um, shouted out for what they've done because we're now past the halfway point and um, some guys have really put up numbers that continue to stick. Make sure you go check all that out at Scorebook Live, where Bodie mentioned we appreciate our high school overlords allowing our pathetic, meager existence down here in San Diego to go on unabridged as they invade the high school universe. Last week was another excellent week of high school football here in San Diego. Do we have any game balls to get to? Um, do we have any uh, – Tommy, I know that you were devoid of um, – kick returns for touchdowns i've got some game balls yeah i got some game balls bodie do you sorry. Have game balls? yeah no i mean that was just that was just quite the way to put it i got some game balls um i'll go ahead and go real quickly um Please. going to the hoy country day madden craig 80 receiving yards and three touchdowns stories uh gavin win seven passes completed five four of them were touchdowns that's a pretty good percentage right there uh, i would take that if i'm Coach, DeMario and Wright for more 277 all-purpose yards in four times last week. He deserves a little more mention. I'm going to guess that's how you say it. A lot of vowels, a lot. There's a J in there. There's a C. There's a K. I don't know, Alexander, if I spelled it wrong, said it wrong. Let me know. Mark Vista, quarterback, 370 total yards, three passing, and two rushing. Mariner is another surprise team so far in the lower divisions. Bodie, your game balls from uh, the last week of high school football. Yeah, I think the first thing that stuck out, a couple of quarterbacks with five touchdown passing games, uh, Jackson Dial from La Jolla and Garrett Bass, so Pizio from La Jolla Country Day, each threw for five touchdowns in their wins last week. Um, Tommy mentioned to Marion Wright, that was another one I had on my list there. Great performance, and, and he seems to be doing it every week. Connor Rath from Poway, 306 rushing yards, four touchdowns. Um, it's really just get, get him the ball and um, he will find the way to the end zone eventually. Uh, and, and I'll mention Julian saying that he's, he's performing every week, but I think this was one of his best uh, 15 of 18 passing for 232 yards and four touchdowns. Can't ask for much more from there. And um, he's got some weapons now um, as they move towards the playoffs, a very dangerous team that sits atop the power rankings. If I said right now, who is the player or maybe what is the, the discussion for player of the year? Is it, Julian saying, "There's no discussion." Roderick Robinson, and Lincoln, and Connor Rath. It's over. Way. It's over. It, I well, think it's no. over. Yeah, but, if if you have to have a list of let's say finalists, three, semifinalists, three. however you want to do it, I would have them on there. But Roderick's my winner. Like it's just pretty simple to me. I, I I'll say this too: it's not just the stats; it's the competition. Also, you, mm -hmm. like it's we've seen people put stats like this up, but I've never seen it like this where you're playing the best teams in the county and then even to an extent the state and you're still putting up crazy numbers like this and a couple of games with no quarterback where you're playing quarterback and everyone knows you're going to get the ball and just run it like there's no there's no deception there and he's still putting up hundreds and hundreds of yards a game i don't think it's even close but even the second half last That's week um they came out with some formations where it was clearly just direct snap to roderick he was either going to run left or run right cathedral so well coached on defense has guys on that side of the ball and they still um, and, and you got to give a shout out to the Lincoln's line because they have they have stepped up and cleared some holes. And, and that was the first thing Roderick said after the game. But um, he is so talented and does not go down easily. He seems like one of the harder people to tackle in recent memory. Yeah. Um, this weekend or this week, because we're, 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 we're less and less in the Saturday games. Uh, we have another huge matchup uh, block of games for you. The first one we want to talk about in our game previews is Escondido at Ramona. Bodie, you had put Ramona on that fringe outside looking in of the top 10 conversation. Escondido is a team that tends to always be pesky down the road and play spoiler in some capacity. So I thought this was an interesting matchup to start with. Uh, let's talk first, though, on your take on it, Bodie. Yeah, for me in this one, I don't think Ramon will get tripped up. I was a little surprised they got tripped up earlier this year against Fallbrook, but that just speaks to what Fallbrook's turned into in recent years, and um, especially this year. They've really had it come all together, um, sitting at 4-2 and two now. But getting back to this game, it's Ramona for me. I think they'll be focused for this one. And um, Coach Baldwin, I, I expect him to, to have his guys ready and, and Ramona to get a, um, a pretty easy win here. Tommy Morris, your take. 
Yeah, I like Ramona here too. Uh, Coach Gideon doing a good job over at Escondido trying to turn that thing around, but Ramona probably just a little too strong for him this year. Jamal said six interceptions so far in the season. I don't know where that puts him on the, the list in the county, but that's got to be pretty high up there. So I like the Bulldogs. The next game that we've got on our bracket is Chula Vista hosting Mar Vista. Chula Vista, little rocky out the gate, but they have gotten hot as of late with three straight wins. Mar Vista, as you talked about, Tommy, has a dynamic quarterback. And really, if you look at it, they got a hell of a schedule that they had to go through to get this season started. They are also on a bit of a heater with two big wins, averaging 50 points a game the last two games. So I thought this was a pretty interesting one to talk about. Uh, Rosters or uh, results aside so far in terms of wins and losses, this one seems like it could be absolutely electric on Friday night. Tommy, you want to go ahead and re-shout out your quarterback? You you can. If not, we assume that you're going to go with Mar Vista. Alexander. Big Alexander. Uh, no, I mean, Mar Vista, be, they, beat, they, beat, um, they beat Claremont, which wasn't necessarily a surprise, but the winning against Benita, to me, was a huge, huge, huge surprise. Um, Chula has looked good against, um, you know, kind of common type opponents to Mar Vista. They, they blew out. Uh, San Ysidro. I like Chula in this one, but I think it'll be close. Mar Vista does not look like the Mar Vista pass, especially last time we saw him out there uh, playing against Benita. So um, I like uh, Chula, but I do like, I like Mar Vista just kind of when we get to the playoff run, but I like Chula in this game. Bodie De Silva. Yeah, I could really be convinced here either way. Um, just because Tommy went Chula Vista, I'll go with Mar Vista here, but I really think it's that sort of toss up of a game. Uh, I think the way Mar Vista has looked on offense in recent weeks gives you some some hope that they can kind of continue that 100 points over the last two games. Um, if they can score enough, I, I think they re- really will be in this game and, and have a shot. Next game we've got is San Marcos traveling to take on Carlsbad. Always want to get a chance to talk about Carlsbad. It seems like every single week they are um, up in that conversation. Uh, or maybe I was absolutely wrong to put Sane in the conversation with Roddy, and I apologize if I dif- disrespected football earlier in the show. Uh, Brody De Silva from Scorebook Live, we will start with you on this game. Yeah, the way Carlsbad's been uh, moving the ball offensively, I think San Marcos will find a way to score. I mean, that's offensively all year. They've really been doing that outside of the La Costa game. Um, they came back with 41 points against San Pasquale last week. They 56 against Oceanside. I saw him put up 41 on Steel Canyon, um, and that's with a freshman quarterback. They got a bunch of um, really good receivers, but the way Carlsbad's playing, um, they will outscore them here, and I feel very confident about that one. So i uh, got to go with Carlsbad. I'll, I'll, I'll go by by 17 here. Tommy Morris. I like Carlsbad in this one, too. Uh, for San Marcos, so the chance is – what will give them a chance to win is they like to spread the ball around. They're kind of hard to read on offense. Ball, Nix, and Cummings all have over 400 yards apiece, and the three of them have 23 touchdowns combined. 11 different nights have caught a pass. So, again, they spread the ball out, makes it a little more difficult in the defense because you can't really key in on any of those three guys, let alone anyone on the offense. I will give a shout-out to the Carlsbad running game because we talk about the passing game a lot. Mason Walsh, 527 yards and five rushing touchdowns. For the Lancers, I do like Carlsbad in this one. It's not an indictment of San Marcos. It's just as Bodie has had Carlsbad up one, two the whole season. There's a reason why they're up there. So I like the Lancers. Moving on, our final game that we want to talk about this Friday night is a surprising matchup here. Kearney at Crawford. This one maybe has a ton of playoff implications and uh, has a ton of off. Well, we've talked with both of these teams in studio. We know both of these teams have great stories this year it's hard to say which one of these you like better um but the the fallout of this could be home seeding or not higher seeding or not these teams could meet again later this year let's start with you Bodie De Silva from scorebook live your take on Kearney at Crawford yeah I'm gonna go with Crawford in this one I think not just being at home but the way they've been playing all year the only loss coming against La Jolla Country Day um, and I think really we need to talk about Matt Marquez being a, a leading coach of the year candidate has done such a great job there um, and, and not just him, but his entire staff. I mean, he can't just be one guy there, but um, they've really rebuilt that and, and turned things around. And um, I expect they will certainly be making noise um, come playoff time. Matt Marquez for coach of the year has an excellent ring, ring to it. Let's uh, let's make that happen. Tommy Morris, your take on this game. 
It depends. So Brody Stump didn't play last week. I'm not 100% sure why, if he was hurt or something happened, but he was not there last week. If he comes back and plays this week, I think Kearney wins this game. I'm not under the impression that, again, I have no idea why he missed the game. Um, I didn't ask anybody. Probably should have. Really bad investigative reporting by me. <laughs> but I, Crawford, again, as, as Bodie said, incredible coaching staff over there. Coach Marquez, not just this year, but the, like the last five years leading up to this year, really took this program from being what was almost like they might have to fold this thing into being a team that looks like they have a chance of winning a CF championship here. So uh, Hamdi Sharif and Ken Armstrong for the for the, uh, for the the Colts combined for 172 yards per game on the ground, and they've had 11 touchdowns this season between the two of them. So again, if Stump plays, I kind of like Kearney in this one. If he does not, I think this is Crawford's game to win. Also, if he does not, it will be a very low-scoring game, and Kearney could squeak one out, steal one potentially, because it'll be one of those games that clock is running the whole time and you know, 10 minutes go by and, oh, my gosh, the first quarter is over. So I like Crawford in this one 50%. Of, you know what? I'll just go on a limb and just say Kearney no matter what. Kearney wins this game uh-huh. no matter what. I don't want to make it. I don't want to make it too um, too complicated. I'll go with Kearney. Bodie De Silva. Yeah, for me, it's it's Crawford, as I mentioned before. I mean, they um, Matt Marquez has done a great job, and um, I just think uh, them being at home and, um, I think with the running game and, and not knowing with, with Kearney if they're going to be fully healthy, as Tommy mentioned there. So uh, it's Crawford for me. Let me just bring up something to everybody. Tommy mentioned the name Kent Armstrong. Uh, there will be graduation aches and pains for Crawfords this year, but they have a sophomore with a, uh, with a huge rush production, and they have one, two, three, four, four sophomores with multiple catches uh, in terms of receiving. This will not be a one-and-done thing. If Crawford is successful this year, there will be another successful year or two following this up. So uh, it's, it's interesting to see what Coach Marquez can get done in this window. Uh, anything that we missed this week? I think we're good. I think we covered everything, yes? I think so. All right. Uh, make sure you follow along with Scorebook Live. For all of your scores and results, I like it on the CIF website where they just got that little tab. You can follow. You can also download the SB Live Sports app. Tommy uh, has a big weekend ahead of him, so if you could all wish him well, uh, he will be no longer a free agent um, after this weekend. He is signing a long-term contract. Uh, do you have the left on deal? You have what? 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 What is the signing bonus um, that you are aware? Is it a more metal? Is it? Is it a wood? Is it a uh, Something cool. It's a battle. On it. uh, gold. So- it will not be for it will not be for daily use, though. I'm too scared I'm gonna lose it. So- are, you, are you gonna get an array of those plastic <laughs> ones? Investing in a bunch of rubber ones. So <laughs> will you be coordinating colors? Will there oh, be I already be good luck? Will oh, 100 percent 100 percent All right. Well, we look forward to Tommy and based on my outfit. I gotta look cool. Deal. We will, we will wish Tommy well this weekend. Congratulations, man. Talk to you guys soon.